Ugh. There we go. This is nice. All right, now we can get to the medium ones. Medium ones, I have a few in my pocket, so it's not there. We got that one in there. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's going to start bunching up shortly, but we're going to make it neat as possible. I could have gone through here, huh? Gone inside this. Maybe even go further. No, this is actually a hard beam. Tesla made a nice hard beam on that one, which is fine. Almost, almost. Maybe I can go underneath this. Yeah, I can go underneath this. Help give it a little bit more support. This area here, this corner. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. I don't like things twisted even though they're going to be bundled together. I just kind of like to keep things separated still. It's like running straight parallel cables. The reason why I leave some slack is just in case the, the plastic needs room to, you know, tuck in somewhere or something. We have it. All right. All right, there's another one. Reach in my pocket. We're coming along. You guys are following me still. I'm in this section right now. Hopefully I didn't stop recording that area there. You guys can see. So it's looking neat. It's the last, last, last part. And I'll bring my sister out here to let her know it's finally done. Okay. Almost, I feel like we can bundle the wires and put it here, to be honest. So let's I want to make it up there, though. I don't know why I want to do that. I think there's a reason why. I just can't tell you right now. Are these the power wires? I don't know why they give us such a amount. I guess if you ever need to move the motor, it's way, way out there, huh? But other than that, I don't think the power wire ever needs to be this long. <laughs> uh, I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. Let me just get this all squared away. Now I can bundle, I can start bundling it up like right here. All right, here we go. Just keep on keeping on. Almost. This will probably be the last one before it gets bundled up up top. So nothing gets. There we go. All right, let's do a little bit of cutting, shall we? Get these guys out of here. Always have a good plier to cut with, or else you. That'd be. Sometimes they look rusty and they actually cut better than the brand new ones. It's just interesting. You gotta get these guys here cut. We're almost there. These guys should be pretty easy. Mm hmm. Now it's starting to look like factory. Okay, so going back here now. Spin it. Anyway. So we're gonna get to this part here where we're gonna bundle everything. I don't want any of the guys to miss all that fun. 
No, we can use quite a bit of tie straps. I think almost used every one of them that I could have. Let's try to find a few more. Now I have to go back in my stash. There's one more here. I don't think I need a big one yet. So. Mm-hmm. Not yet, I guess. So we're gonna we're gonna put all underneath here now. Every one of these little bundles of joy. And maybe including the power too, right? Oh, that would be fun. Oh, the power one we should just put it near there. The power one we could probably tie strap separately. That way, you know, anything that goes this direction should be all together in this direction. We don't need to bring the power that's coming out of the battery, the positive side anyway. We just don't. Okay, so here we go. I would love to do a number eight, unfortunately, but these wires are so, they're so twining up a little bit. I'm not even sure if I can get them all. Let's see here. Maybe I can go zigzag instead of perfect loop. The reason why is because some of them are not going to let me because they're shorter than others. So I'll do what I can and then the rest will just zigzag. Talk about a bunch of coils. <laughs> all right. So. Like this one won't let me anymore, but this one might. The negative line. This one still. Can I bundle it with the negative line? Come on. Make up your mind. I gotta know which one's the limit. Okay, so there we go. That's the limit. These ones still have some slack. So we'll keep winding these guys up until they come neatly within certain areas of themselves. I'm not sure this is a too tight of a wine. You don't want to damage wires internally. But I just can't stand seeing them chaotic. Alright, I think this is this is my maybe the negative wire. Cut a little bit more slack for him. This guy can go one more. <laughs> it's like make up your mind. Okay. So I think this is good. If we were to wind it and bundle it right here I think I'll be pretty darn happy so let's do it so we need like a medium one we'll feed it through here you guys see that we'll feed it through here we'll catch it from the bottom my little loop there my little amazing how much wires we we're able lucky this thing has a big gap I can twist it because I came the wrong way Woo. A little chilly out here. But if it's too hot, you can do the work either, right? I think for the trunk, I'm glad, glad to be as chilly. There you go. How about that? How does that look, by the way? Does that look kind of like a, a vacuum line? <laughs> I could probably put another one on this side, though. So, just in case we need to bring it out, we'll have it. Hopefully, nothing gets supposed to be tucked in here. I'll be in trouble over there. It's supposed to be some kind of plastic inserts here. Hey, Terry. Oh, my sister. She's probably, you at it again. She knows what I'm doing. Kind of keep her in the loop so she doesn't complain about me staying in the garage that night and day. She's excited about it too because she knows how hard it is to close these trunks and open them because she's short. So, uh, woman definitely... Ex I definitely appreciate the automatic, especially the foot sensor for picking up things, having no free hand. It's a definitely plus. Uh, I mean, this doesn't look too shabby. Now what I can do is unplug this and go underneath this a little bit, the power. Because currently right now you can see here, it's I can go underneath here and bring it up top. It's going to be a little tricky, but I can do it. So let's go ahead and unplug it real quick. Mm. Gotta be able to unplug as much as you could put it in, right? Oh, there we go. <gasps> Alright, so we're gonna go underneath here, I guess. Yeah, we can go underneath. Go underneath it. 
again this is all preference you guys can do the wiring any way you love to whatever is convenient for you guys and you guys see it fitting enough you can stop um, again it's just me I just like to take too much more time than needed to get things the way I think I I like it and who knows it's not always permanent with me sometimes I might change it <coughs> but so far I'm really satisfied it's good to do something you're you know you have a little bit you know pride in anything you do I, I figured you know it's good to show some pride in it that way you could do a really ph phenomenal job we can actually yeah we should just go in here this will probably be the best way comes out pretty easy I hope yeah comes out pretty easy I try not to go underneath the um, I just don't want to interfere with the, the current status uh, the tie strap the big one so pulled out pretty easy see right there so I don't want to interfere with this one so I went underneath this this one's gonna be the main thing that just holds it and we are done and then one more final one is this guy here figure out how we're gonna bundle this joy we might actually have this have its own kind of little loophole it's just a huge positive cable wire I mean this is probably one thing I can say they probably only need less than six inches and yet they give you like 12 12 feet how about that so yeah. <laughs> all right so we are almost there you guys this is it. final 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 so you can see how much more neither is look at that no exposed wires anywhere well a lot of exposed wires but not scrambled right that's what we're trying for. We're trying to hide the OEM wire cards. So let's go ahead and get that fully. I think you guys will probably be fine if I put it over here. Okay, so bringing these guys back. Luckily, this thing is still flexible. Thank goodness. Woo! Speaking of flexible, this thing is not. Let me try to get it stationed. There we go. Locked in. You always feel when it's stable versus non. All right, so I'm going to poke this through here. There's the power. I might have to reset it now. It actually might have to reprogram everything. And what's great now, you can move this around because it's not been locked in yet. And you don't want to lock it until last. I just find it easier going through all this wire mess. Okay, so now what you want to do is how we're going to tidy up our positive cable line here. It's a lot of it. Um, I got a feeling we can actually probably hide it um, like underneath here, but I'm not just going to hide underneath here. Um, so all I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Can I? I could probably, um, you know, I bond it up, wire it, then take it straight back to this positive wire here. So let me go and disconnect it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is this. You see how, we, how much, this is the positive line, you guys. <laughs> I think Hanshaw might want to take a note of this. We don't need all this extra length deposit cable. You're not going to route the motor like to the back or anything like that. Maybe, maybe some install required, but for the meantime, it's convenient right there. And it's only like inches away from the battery, literally like a feet. The pause terminal. We don't need 12 feet or six feet of wire. This is what it is. I think this is at least probably 10 feet of positive wire cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it up and I'm going to feed it back in a very small gap. But I'm going to feed it back through here. And hopefully I can get the positive. So lucky is a bullet connector. Lucky is a bullet connector. I can come back through here. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let me do it. Let me do it and stop my yapping. Okay. Okay. So here we go. We're gonna go and disconnect this. Oh, now be really careful now. I'm taking the insulator off of both. Okay, now put the insulator back in because you don't want to short. The minute it touches this negative without the insulator, you just pop your fuse. All right, so here we go. This is the last of its call. Yeah, I still want to probably put another tie strap here just to make it look a little bit more stable. Probably help this pin down as well. But in the meantime, I think it's okay. Okay, so what I'll do is I guess I could feed it loosely first. So let me do that. It's weird. How did I ever get over here anyway? <laughs> Oh, because it splits the other way. Okay, I got it. I got it. All right. So anyway, I got to feed this guy back here. Bring him back out. Let him curve all the way around. I'm not sure this underneath one is even. A, no, there's no gap further. 
so then I can join them right here. Speaking of joining, I should do it now. Okay, here we go. Oh, see a little spark? Oh, lucky. <laughs> it's grounded, so good. All right, now pull this back, the insulator. You gotta make sure this is insulated because if you don't, this is the only thing that's protecting you from having a short. If it touches the negative wire prematurely, <clears throat> before it makes this full circuit elsewhere, it's just gonna pop that 20 amp fuse and you just gotta run to the auto parts store or, or wherever I think Lowe's might have them too. Just wanna make sure it's out of the way, you know? There we go. It's out of the way. Now it's time for us to go ahead and run this wire neatly here. Hopefully my neighbor doesn't bother us. He's getting no guy. No, I'm kidding. He's a cool guy. He's in front of me. That's why I don't want him to come over and embarrass me. But he probably will do it anyway because he knows I'm trying not for him to do it. But he's a good neighbor, though. He's always coming here for us. Okay, just need one more medium tie strap. We should do it. And there it is. Actually, two, because we're going to also tie strap that center loop. I forgot. So let me bring... I'll just bring a couple more. Uh, I'm gonna have to research a little bit more on that version three, because that's what they said. So I'm super excited. Uh, what that will become, the version three. Okay, so here we go. This one's gonna be nailed down here, so I might as well do it now. See so much more structure. I'll come back and you know take that out. Hopefully this doesn't interfere with it. I don't think so, but we'll find out. This might be for something where it pops in and I'll be in trouble if that's the case. Hopefully this is just a hole, not a, a stabilizer. You yeah. know, for the rods. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna tidy up this positive wire and we're done. We're just gonna put things back in. If you notice my positive wire, I'm gonna do a little bit more wider. I'm gonna do a try to do a number eight. I call it number eight, but it's just a, a loop de loop. The reason why is I'm afraid that if you do it curl up too much, being that it's a positive wire and all, like I said again, it might create some weird induction. Okay, so here we go. This is an inch. Then I'm going to try to shove it in there. As crazy as that is. Okay, let's go and cut it. Again, I haven't even tied down the motor yet, which I'm glad I didn't because it seems like we're always lifting it up. Till the end, so. Like we're about almost done. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't see it in here. I thought I had a little bit of gap left, but there's not enough you can see here. It's probably maybe about three centimeters the most, and this thing is like close to four centimeters. So what I did was I just kind of moved it over here, and I finally sealed this guy here, locked him down. Let's see, there it goes. So he's ready. He's not gonna peel off. I don't think these things do break off easily. So we're gonna go ahead and start cutting this out. You can see here where all the cables are ran. They kind of kind of meet up here very clean install you don't mind me saying <laughs> so there we go took a lot of time and i just don't know the fitment yet still so we might have some trouble in this area maybe even here and maybe even here or, or there who knows so once we'll put the case on if it doesn't come on securely then we know we have to move this around which is not a big deal so let's go and cut that out right now just kind of tidy up a little bit picked up all the pieces well i think the phone battery is dying so let me go and start cutting things out here. 
Let's see if I can cut this big one. This one's a, oh, oh, that was a big one. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I learned my lesson from the first time, right? I think it fell down though. No, it didn't. Mm. All right, let's see if I can find it. Do we have any more to cut? Nope. Who knows? It might actually give us a clue as to where the other guy might have went. Gosh, I have these plastic zip ties byproduct going on me. I don't feel anything. Oh, is that it? No. Let's see if I can get my little thing here. Give it some light. Shine some light on his black on black. So that's kind of fun to go find, huh? Shouldn't be that big of a I thought I saw it actually come to the side already. Maybe it falls underneath the bars or something. I'm still seeing if I can find that little piece before we seal it. Would be a nice montage to getting this completely buttoned up and ready to go. But nope, 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 nope. Man, it's like a, a trap. If I ever get this thing on the lift gate or something, I swear I'll ask them if I can just go take a peek and blow everything out of there, suck everything out of there. I don't see anything, it just, I'm afraid it might go in that little gap right there. Might be in that little wheelbase gap area. Uh, that's fine, I'm sure the wind will probably knock it out. Here, I'll, I'll give it even a jingle just to make sure. We can rattle it. It's good to have a cardboard, especially if you don't have a lift. Ooh, got that dirt. A lot of dirt. A lot of dirt. Sorry, you guys didn't see well. I was doing there, you can see all that dirt fall. Wow, it's a lot of dirt that goes in here, huh? A lot of dirt. Alright, <clears throat> that's enough. Whatever I can jingle out. Oh, hmm. It might have really fallen into that little gap there. If that's the case, it should come right out here then. Or eventually will. I don't think they built a dirt trap. Seeing if any, any kind of crookets. Nothing. I think this is a strut bar, I call it something else earlier. Good to have. Nothing. Nothing. Just disappeared into the abyss. Well, I'm sure with the wind and everything, it'll force it. This is where the battery pack is. Look at that. You guys see that? Right there, that's all the battery system, cooling and everything. It's crazy stuff. All right, so we're good. Uh, we got everything cut, I believe. So now it's time to just kind of lay things back on there and see how it closes still. Well, we already know it closes really well without it. Let's do it one more time. Show and tell again. So the thing is you gotta reset it. So here we go. Pull it down one time, just a little bit. I think I went too far. Okay. Just about maybe a feet. 
let it close the first time, it'll retract up. There we go. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, this guy always has a gap. I'll ask Tesla to look at it. See if they can do it now. I think they told me since I put the, the seal, it might make it difficult. But I really don't think that's a problem. I think it's just the way it is. All right. Well, let's see what we got. Put my battery bank in here. Let's go and open it back. Beautiful. Oh, love it. All right, so one more time, just to make sure it's still golden. As long as we don't push it or wiggle it or something like that, I think it's safe to say you don't have to reset it. See, so it just keeps going. Pretty damn sweet. And I would do it on an app too. Unfortunately, my phone's in use right now recording, so I can't. This is what I've been using to keep the power charge, a power bank, directly to the phone. I already used the first uh, first 5,000 one. I think this is like a 50,000 one. So, you want to come and check it out, Terry? He's done. You ready? <laughs> okay. I'm going to show and tell my sister here. Okay, you ready? I'm going to need your help. Yeah, just come over and push the front to open. Right there. Oh yeah, I could. I could. I could use a remote, but I'm on the phone, recording. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll do it. That way you can see it. You want to go out there? Just be in the front. All right. This is what my sister looked like before she uh, put makeup on. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Got embarrass her a little bit, right? Makes it entertaining. Okay, here we go. Open. Wow. Okay, now the open part you already know it opens, right? Uh -huh. But the closed part is what we gotta figure out. Uh -huh. All right, you want to come and see it? These are all the wires. Look how neatly I wrapped it. This is the mo uh, this is the CPU. This is all the wires to the latch. This is another wire to the latch. I hide it, and it goes to here. And then the, there's a the motor here, the motor that pulls the cable. Okay, so the button's not in yet, but this is the button, Terry. Go and push the button. Uh, push the button and pull your arm out. Just push it. Go ahead. Just to push it. Look. Yeah. Okay. Now watch. Watch. <laughs> so yeah, it works. Uh, the only thing is, I, I uh, yeah, I guess the app you can open it back to the app. So that's what makes it remote. Hey, please don't scratch the car. Yeah, even though you got your pajamas on. <laughs> uh, all right, so yeah, I can't wait to eat. Uh, I'm hungry, uh, but I'm gonna go and test it out. I gotta put the shell back on to see how it fits. So okay, I will do that. I gotta put the shell back to see if it's still closed properly, Terry. The plastic shell, right here. The underneath one so yeah so we'll find out the final call when we need to adjust it we're not going to bolt it down again we're going to do a dry fit so let's go and open this bad boy up again we can take out that beeping noise i think this is the fastest it's supposed to go in fact why don't we adjust it now let's see what the level it is hold it down until you hear the beep Okay, that's the setting beep, two beeps, the speed, three beeps, I guess it's four beeps, five beeps, six beeps. Okay, we let it go. I just let it go on the six beep. Okay, now, much faster, you know what I mean? Look like you're going somewhere, you know what I mean? Not like, take your time. I mean, unless you want to show it off then yeah you can take your time but when you're ready to go you're ready to go you don't have time the minute you walk two seconds away you want to see your front close so you don't have to worry about it i wonder if you actually tell the car to lock will it close everything that would be a good feature you know how you lock everything on your way out you just hit the lock button or when you walk away will your trunk close for you because you're no longer there that would be a very smart feature overall i guess it was just learning where the wires went and so forth it was time consuming and my pet peeve of tying it neatly. That was really the only challenge I had. I got lucky, I guess. It was just this, not these two, to actually have to manure. Manure. Um, so now I'll just put the plastic clamshell on and be on my merry way.
So I'm happy the way it turned out. It looks really good. So let's go ahead and uh, carry this clamshell on here. Let me go and put this aside so I can actually use both hands. You guys can see me from afar. Just putting the clamshell on. And I'll bring the camera in closer so you can see me snap it back on. Sorry if I moon you guys. My pants are a little loose. Maybe because I've been on this project for like two days now. And I'm kind of starving. It's a good way actually. I need to lose a little bit of this belly. Might not have to worry about my straps. Oh. Let me just prepare. <laughs> I don't want to moon you guys. All right. All right, the front was not that hard. That's why they only charge $200. Uh, but the, the truck one, now that's the beauty. Except so that's why they charge 350 uh, it's just 300 just for the trunk by itself without the kick sensor $50 more to install the kick sensor But if you have the newer model, I kid you not it's a little bit more easier a lot easier Actually, you don't have to remove the bumper, which I hopefully I'll show you guys uh, Shortly uh, I might take a break after this one, but to you guys you'll see my like day is still young so, Let's just go and get everything out of the way Do the fried fit. All right, here we go. I'm gonna lift the bad boy up here. Uh, if there's anything to wipe down the bottom, you know me. I'm gonna wipe it down first, first and foremost. So you can see here, this is what the bottom of the trunk looked like before I put it on. Nothing. It's pretty clean, huh? Yeah, it's very clean. Hopefully, again, these things don't go inside certain areas where this one's weird. Like it's kind of loosey loosey. Supposed to be this loose? I guess. Tesla's pretty smart with their engineers. They design things to just really snap on. I'm not missing anything. You guys can see any of the broken. A little dusty. Just dusty, that's all. Not any hard dirt or anything. Oh yeah, look at these ones. Still has some of that nasty. I get I kid you not. Uh, just be careful when you go to some PPF places or any window tinting job. You know, don't just be fooled by their just factory train. Make sure they have experience enough where they can do a good job on your car or else you're gonna end up having to, you know. Waste their time, your time, because you're gonna not like the work. So, I recommend take it to someone who who has a little pride in their work, you know? Not someone who's just trying to wing it. Oh, I'd really like to do it. All right. And can do it. All right, so there we go. I put on cardboard, so I'm not scratching it. All right, so here we go. We're going to be facing oh, on top here. All right. I guess we can scoop one first and then move away from the other one. How is this working? Can I go from underneath, maybe? All right. First of all, I see where it's getting the cable a little bit here. There it goes. Kind of let it wiggle itself in. Eventually, will. Again, we're just doing a dry fit. Don't need to go all crazy. You want to maybe pull this over so that latches over. Bring you guys over. This is it, Wes. This is a dry. Oh, we gotta get our wires out here because we need to bring it. So our pu our push button. Else we're gonna have. So everything looks like it's fitting in. I just haven't pushed this clamp down yet. So let me go and get that button out of there. Because if I don't get it out of there, we won't be able to get the button. So let's go ahead and get the button. Let's see if I can get the button while you guys are on here. I have to lift you guys up with it so here we go so this is how I lift it 
got to get my hand in there somewhat. Figure out. The button's not that bad. Come on, button, where are you? Here it is. Hello. Just want to make sure it doesn't hit anything that's not supposed to hit. There we go. Good. That wasn't too hot. That wasn't too bad. Keep the buttons over. There's a little tab that these things go into. They have to go in. Oop. Speak too soon, too easy. Oh no, a few more fell. Uh. All right, let's go and get them out again. I think I got a few of those little side plastic clips just fell on me, interlocks. What's hard is when they fall, you already know where they go. Nowhere that can be found again. <laughs> so let me go and get that off again. And let me get all those little side clips out of there. Oh, there it goes. Nice. For once, I had good fortune. I found it. I found it, found it. Normally, I don't get that lucky. So you can see here, it kind of broke on one. We were almost, almost there. Uh, there's always gonna be some casualty. Uh, well, I'll just ask Tesla to give me a replacement. Hopefully they have these clips. So here we go. What is it? The blanket, remember? Oh, just for right now, because I want to spin the other one lighter, and now put that one afterwards to spin it again. Spin it, rinse it. Yeah, if it's by itself, it might work because it was all a bunch of with the other one. That's why I had the hard time. No, because this one by itself, I tried already. Okay, so you, what you want to do? You want to squeegee in the tub? No, I need to go to the bottom and the machine. Okay, got it. No problem. All right, Terry. No problem. <laughs> all right, my sister's just ganging on me on the, the laundry deal. Yeah, they, they value that. Uh, I wouldn't blame them. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna put this one back. There you go, I received it. It's interesting how this thing recedes. Probably didn't see it, but it just it like comes in like this. So this one's a broken one. So hopefully we can get a, a spare part for this guy here. Pop that sucker out. It's gonna be no good to us here. I could put it in, but it's no good to us. It's not gonna stay in, that's a problem. I'll just mention there's a broken clip. They're probably like, oh, you have a broken clip, but you also have new struts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We'll, we'll put this one last. Because um, we're still doing the dry fit, right? So we're not gonna, we're not gonna try to force this one in yet. See this right here, it's broken clip. So I got it into his little housing, but then I got to get it also. So it just, it snapped off, literally broken. These guys are still good. These guys are still good. These guys are still good. Make sure they're still in place. When you put them back, they're still good there. And we are still good. I believe the speaker will put the adhesive on it last. It's not a big deal. But let me be more careful this time. Um, because I will go and snap the clip on there now. Uh, that way I'll hold it at least in place. So I'll show you. <sighs> Actually, it'll be this part that's going to need it. Let's see if I can spin it around. Now. 
So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put the clip on it now, like right here. That way you guys can see where it holds it at. Or I can just leave it off right now. I mean, I can flex it, I believe, and maybe pop it in later. Because I was thinking I can go ahead and snap it like right here, right now. I can almost come from the side, really. Actually, no, you can't. So there it goes. That's where it would have been, could have been. Right there. Just held into place like right there. Woo, it's windy. This thing is flexing me. Okay, so. Just gotta be really more careful. Here, you guys can see me. Horse and I'll put it on my sister's car here. That way, you guys can see an angle. Cool. All right. How you guys can see me? Down a little bit. We can go and start putting the rivets in. You can see that it makes it pretty easy when you're almost there. To that, I kind of curve it in like this, you know, not just like force it down because you want to make sure it's over. Snap. You can see it. And those two kind of wobbly little tricks are somewhere over there. They're not actually here. I thought they would be here, but they're not. Okay, but we're not. We're gonna do a dry fit, meaning we're not gonna bolt it down yet. So let's go ahead and get this rivet in there. There it go. There we go. Maybe if I wasn't too careful, I could have just got it in the first time. So we'll just let them know this one broke. We're missing that one as well. Okay, so here it is. This is the final. Oh boy. Hope it doesn't cut the wires. Not bad. Oh, look how it popped up a little bit. See that? This is probably what he's talking about. After you bolt it down, you have this little gap. So we're gonna open it up and we're gonna do our, we're gonna do some more adjustment. So what it needs now, we'll find out. Just let him know. This, it was trying to close, um, but for whatever reason, it couldn't close all the way. So let's go and open it. Back to the drawing board of adjustment. We don't have to put any of these in. Push it twice. All right. Adjustments are right here, right here, or right there. So they're not that hard to find. So let me so move these out of the way for a second. Just do it one more time just to see really what we're dealing with. That or we might actually have to um, see it locks, so that means it's just not pulling down enough. Okay, so let's do some adjustment. Got to bring it down a little further. All right. If it didn't lock, then it must be just an issue with this guy right here removing it. 
which I doubt it though. But you know what's the simplest fact? That we can just remove and see for sure. If that's the only thing that's holding it, because maybe it's hitting this, it's too elevated high. And we know we have another concern. And if it's not that, then we can adjust the other ones, no biggie. But let's just remove these for right now. Little two, simple rubber that hits this guy here. It's not gonna kill it. Oh, let's just push it from here. Okay, it still pops out regardless. So it's not these rubber things at all. So let's go and get back onto here. It's getting dusty. No. Might want to start closing the garage soon. Whoa, it's dusty. It looks like the wind is blowing everything toward this direction. So let me just back up the car. We're going to go ahead and put it to reverse. Still got a lot of room. <laughs> 